Emulation on Android smartphones and tablets can be hit or miss when it comes to which consoles can be emulated properly. Many old retro consoles have been emulated on mobile for quite some time, but PlayStation Vita emulation has not been possible. That changed recently with the release of Vita 3K for Android. For those who may not be aware, Vita 3K is a PS Vita emulator that was originally released on GitHub back in 2018. At the start, this emulator was only able to play homebrew games, but over time, commercial games had started to become supported by this software. The emulator is still labeled as experimental, and you'll find that there are many commercial games that have glitches when you try to play them. However, some of these glitches are minor, and there are plenty that can be played from start to finish without any issues. A couple of days ago, an Android port of Vita 3K was released to the community, and it has brought PlayStation Vita emulation to smartphones and tablets. While the PC version of Vita 3K is open source, there has not been any source code released for the Android port of the software. It's presumed that this is to prevent clones from popping up and making people pay for the code and the software, but this decision has caused some drama within the Android community who generally prefers open source options. If you're okay with using closed source code to emulate games on Android, we can install Vita 3K on your Android smartphone or tablet by first visiting the GitHub page for the project. I'll be including this link and all related links in the video description below for those who may want a quick way to get to the software. Once the APK has been downloaded and installed, we can open it up and then go through the installation process. It's going to instruct you to download the firmware, which you can do by long pressing on the download update button and then selecting the save link option. Once this has been downloaded, we can click on the install firmware file and then choose the firmware file that we had just downloaded. You should get an installation successful message here and then the install status message will go from an X to a V. Next you're going to be instructed to install or download a font package which after it has been downloaded can be installed the exact same way. Again, we're looking for a success message on the install and the X next to the installed message changing to a V. Once you have both of those installed, we can tap on next, tap on next, and then tap on OK. We're required to create a user account within the emulator. And then once all of that has been set up, we can tap on the user that we created. With that done, we can then install a game, which is done by tapping on the file option right there selecting install zip or VPK, and then choosing select file. Now let's browse through our internal storage and find a game that we have made a backup of or that has been downloaded. 
it can take some time to install the game into the emulator. And you can follow the progress by looking at the third bar right there at the bottom. It's recommended that you do not close the application while there is a game being installed. And there's a note saying that the installation can take some time since they need to decrypt the game in order for it to be installed. Once the installation has been completed, you should find the game right here in the list. We just need to tap on it to be taken to the game page. And then we can start the game right here. As a side note, compatibility with commercial games can be hit and miss. Some are unable to be booted at all, others are bootable but end up not being able to display anything. Some games are able to reach the first in-game menu, while others are playable from start to finish. I'll be linking the Vita 3K compatibility list in the video description as well. But remember, that list may have some inaccuracies when it comes to the Android version of the emulator. Many of these games have only been tested on a PC and have no issue when playing them on that platform. But there are some games that struggle to be played on the Android version for a variety of reasons. Some hardware just isn't fast enough to play many of these games. Others may have unique bugs that were not present when tested on the PC version of Vita 3K, but they are unable to be played properly on Android. As of recording this video, the back screen touch controls is not supported yet. If you end up trying to play a game that requires this, then you can try the workaround, which is to enable PS TV mode within the settings area of the Vita 3K application. They seem to be doing nightly builds of Vita 3K for Android. So if something doesn't work when you try to play it right now, report it to the developers and then wait a bit to see if a future update fixes the issue.